We're really glad to be with you again in this uh, little time of uh, looking into the Word of God and we're on lesson 25 at the moment which is concerning the gift of forgiveness and uh, what we need to realize that each one of us is always called to forgive and so forgiveness is a central part of our lives from beginning with the Lord right to the end because to keep the body of Christ in unity uh, there are mistakes that are made by people mistakes are made by ourselves at times and so we must always be willing to number one repent or change direction or change our mind or see when we've made a mistake and also to apologize and forgive people now many of us carry hurts and wounds and uh, often when uh, we're starting out ministering to people as a shepherd to the sheep you'll find that that many of the sheep have been deeply wounded and often carrying real resentments uh, we notice this uh, in the Philippines but it's not only in the Philippines it's in many places but we notice there when we lived there for some time is that one of the major problems there is that people hold resentments from past hurts and it's, it's sometimes very difficult for them to release that and to be free from it but you know the essence of forgiveness provides us with a freedom freedom from guilt and and freedom from resentment and so uh, it's important that we understand now in this study uh, we are centrally looking at three gifts of forgiveness and I'll mention these and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the scriptures but the three gifts of forgiveness are number one the gift which God gives to us number two is the gift of forgiveness that we give to others and thirdly the gift of forgiveness that we must give is to forgive ourselves so this really covers everything that involves our lives and broken relationships and hurts and wounds and so forgiveness can be a, a, a massive massive ingredient into the healing of people's lives and as shepherds we need to make this a priority that that spirit of forgiveness is always there because none of us has reached perfection yet so therefore all of us will make mistakes from time to time and sometimes we make mistakes that hurt people it may not be our intention to do that but we have to be censored sensitive that when we see somebody who is hurt upset and disappointed that we uh, uh, we want to receive their forgiveness and we want to forgive them if they're in the wrong and uh, you know one of the things that we dis discovered earlier on was in the fall when Adam and Eve fell uh, they stepped out of God dependence into independence and they stepped out of God consciousness into self consciousness and so independence and self consciousness have ruled down through the ages but the gospel through the work of the cross through the work of the resurrection through the Lord Jesus Christ who took our judgment as well as our sins and our hurts and our wounds God brings us into a freedom and the scripture says that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free and whom the Son sets free is free indeed and so forgiveness is one of the central factors here let me repeat the first gift is God's forgiveness to us for all the mistakes we've made 
The second gift is the gift that I give to others who I have felt have, been, have made mistakes. And thirdly, I've got to be able to give myself the gift of forgiveness and forgive myself. It's surprising how many people can't forgive themselves. And it's mainly because the enemy has come with such a load of guilt the moment that we see we've done something wrong. It's good to, to be sin conscious if we are cleansed from sin, if we realize that the sins have been dealt with, if we realize the old life has been dealt with, if we realize that, that Jesus bore it all so that we could be free from it all, cleansed from it by the blood of Jesus, cleansed by the work of the cross, cleansed by the resurrection. And so our position as shepherds is that we need to experience this and we must be a forgiving person as well as teaching others, the sheep, to be forgiving people as well. So we could uh, put a statement out like this. We must never stop forgiving. Now let me just read uh, just uh, one or two scriptures along that line. And, and then the Bible talks about uh, something that we, uh, that we can't do. You see, all our debts were paid by Jesus, except one thing was, was left for us to pay, a debt for us to pay. And Bunty will be coming in a minute to share with you what that is. But here are the key scriptures here, just before we move on. Uh, first of all, God's gift, uh, the gift that God gives you of forgiveness. It says in 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now that really is a complete, complete cleansing and, and freedom from our sins and the effects of them. What a wonderful gift that is. Do you realize that this is a gift God has given you? It's not something you earn, but it's something you receive. It's from God. And, and the whole gospel is from God first and received by faith by us. So we have to express our faith to be able to receive that gift into our lives. But when we do, we're free from all con condemnation. Now, is that good or what? It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Okay, the next uh, gift is the gift that we give to others. And it says uh, in Luke chapter 17, 3 to 4, it says, If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, well, you're to forgive him. So this is really an illustration of the, of the extent, the completeness, the absoluteness of our forgiveness for others, providing they show repentance before the Lord. So that must never come. Another time it mentions in the scripture that we have to forgive 70 times 7. And, that, and that's an expression, of course. It's not adding up 70 times or even 70 times 7, but it's, it's inferring that this is an ongoing, absolute thing in our lives, that we are a people who forgive. As a shepherd, you're a person that forgives. And you will find, you will find that many times in the ministry that you find you're in situations where you are betrayed. Jesus was betrayed by Judas, one of his twelve. And you'll find in the ministry there are people. Sometimes the people whom you do the most for end up betraying you. And so this is a, this is a factor that's in the life of all of us who minister. I remember that we came back from, from one uh, missionary trip and we had a wonderful fellowship and someone, uh, one of the elders, faced me up and said... Uh, it's either you or me. 
And we have, we have lived all our lives for unity and that's what every shepherd must do. That's what every sheep, sheepfold must be. Part of the corporate body of Christ working together. And so we were challenged and, uh, and we had worked for unity in the city at that particular time. It was the cornerstone of our ministry. And while we were there, there was a great sense of unity in that city. But we could see clearly that if we stayed at that point, that there would have been a disunity and division. And so we decided, we went before the Lord actually, and the Lord showed us what to do, so we departed. And uh, so there's a price sometimes. I wonder how Jesus felt when he was betrayed by Judas. I believe he still loved Judas. But Judas had chosen his path. And there are some self-centered ministries who choose their own path too. But you must never be numbered amongst that. You must never be that. Because you are called to unity. And forgiveness is some of the, one of those things that really helps us to maintain that unity in the, in the sheepfold. The other thing is the gift that you can give to yourself. This is in Philippians chapter 3, it's 13 and 14. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. There's times when difficulties come, when testings come, and sometimes we have to put things behind us and move on for that heavenly goal. So we can promise you, we can promise you, it will not always be a straightforward ministry, but there will be interruptions, there'll be problems, there'll be betrayals, but we have to forgive ourselves if we've been at fault and move on in the mighty plan of God. Now, Bunty's going to come and share with us um, uh, the, the debt, the one debt in our whole life which we have to pay. So we don't have to pay for our sins, we don't have to pay uh, for so many things because Jesus took it all for us. But there's one thing we have to pay, a debt which we owe. And uh, why don't you come and just share that with us? It's very important, isn't it? It sure is. Yes, it's such an important subject. And you remember how we, we've already shared about how when Jesus died on the cross, he cried out, it is finished. And that literally meant debts all paid, paid in full. And so the Lord has paid all our debts of sin, if you like, all our debts to the Lord have been paid by the Lord himself. But here in Romans chapter 13 and verse 8, it tells us that the Lord has left us one debt still to pay. And it's not a debt in that sense to him. But let's have a look at it. He says in verse 8 of Romans chapter 13, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law, has fulfilled the righteousness of God. So we have a debt that we are to, as it says here, continually pay. It is a debt constantly that we have. Because of the great love that God has shown us, he's left us with a debt that we love one another. And so very much part of love is this whole gift of forgiveness, forgiving one another. It's uh, when you think about how the Lord has forgiven us, that's how we are to forgive one another. Imagine what we owed the Lord, if you like, and he's totally wiped it clean. Now that is what forgiveness means. You know, you've probably heard the saying, the joke that goes, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. But of course, that is not forgiveness at all. Forgiveness literally is a wiping clean. It's a, it's a cleansing 
right out of our thinking, forgetting that which is behind. That's what Paul said, mm. forgetting that which is behind. And that is in relation also, not only to how we've been hurt, forgetting that which is behind, but also the debt that we owe others. So forgiveness is very much a wiping out of everything that we think is owed to us. So we owe a debt because of what the Lord has done for us, and that debt is to love one another. It's a continuous debt. Now, as we talk about forgiveness, it is very much, the whole walk with the Lord is very much a daily walk. It's every day. I went, oh, a few years ago, I was invited to speak to a ladies' convention in Thailand. And before the actual convention, the ones who were organizing it organized a special luncheon to, if you like, introduce me to ladies. They were wanting to get ladies to, to come to the convention. And so they organized this luncheon to introduce the convention and to introduce me as the one who would be the speaker at the convention. Now, I didn't realize as I went to this luncheon for all these ladies who'd been invited, a large number of them were from the embassies that were in, in Bangkok. I remember meeting the, the wife of the Russian amb ambassador and there were different wives of ambassadors there and people who worked in the embassies and so on. So it was very much a, a higher echelon, if I could put it that way, <laughs> of society in this luncheon that I was invited to speak at. And the ladies organizing it said, now, you just have 20 minutes, no more than 20 minutes. But they'd organized all kinds of items before this, um, this, before I was to speak. And so one lady got up and sang an opera, an opera song, and another one did something else. I can't remember all the details. But the last one to do an item was a lady from the Australian Embassy. And she told me before, before we got together for the lunch, she said, oh, I'm going to do a humorous one, she said. And so she was the one that got up before I was to speak. Now, nothing had been organized. I, nobody, I hadn't even, I didn't even know what I was going to speak on at this point of time. I knew that most of these, these ladies probably had had no real experience with the Lord. And so it, I was really praying, Lord, what do you want me to share with these ladies? So I'm sitting at my table, at the luncheon table, all different tables around with ladies, and I'm sitting at the, t the table that I was at, and while all these items are going on, I'm praying and saying, Lord, what do you want me to minister to these ladies? Anyway, this Australian girl got up with her humorous skit that she had prepared. And what she did was this. I was sitting at the side of the table where she was. She'd put a, a cover around the table where she was so you couldn't see under, under the table. And I could see under the table because I was at the side of it. And I could see there were all these things that she'd put under the table. And then she got up to do her skit. And she pulled out a small carry-on bag that you take on to an aeroplane. And she put it on the table and she said, Lady, I want to show you how we should pack a bag to go for a shopping trip to Hong Kong. And she had this small bag there and she said, all right, ladies. She said, we're going to go on a shopping trip to Hong Kong. If we're going on that trip, she said, we don't want to go with a lot. We want to come back with a lot, isn't that right? And all the ladies laughed and they said yes. So she pulled something out from under the table and she said, ladies, do we need to take this with us on a shopping trip to Hong Kong? And all the ladies said, yes, definitely we need that. We can't do without that. So when it went into this small carry-on airport air bag, she put it in there. And then she pulled something out, else out, held it up. And she said, do we need this? 
All the ladies said, definitely, we need that. She put it in the bag, and of course, you know what she was doing. By the end of I don't know how many minutes, she had taken out almost everything from under the table. All the ladies were saying, yes, we can't, we have to have that, we can't go without that. And they're all laughing at themselves, because by this time, this little bag was so full, it was overflowing with things, and she couldn't couldn't close it, couldn't zip it up. So everybody's laughing at themselves. And then she said, all right, she said, now I'm going to show you what you do need to go on a shopping trip to Hong Kong. So she took everything out, put it back under the table, took out a few things, put it in the, in the small bag, zipped it up, held it up, and she says, that's what you need so you can come back with a lot of things. And everybody's laughing. But I got my message. I knew it was like I had watched a parable. And what I want to sh I want to share with you now is what I shared with those ladies because I believe it is such an important truth and such an important principle that we have to take into our Christian life and as shepherds we must minister this to the sheep mm -hmm. and share it with the sheep. And this is what the Lord gave me. And that lady sat down, and I got up, and I, sh and I shared with the ladies in that room. And I said, I want to share with you two very important principles of life. How life works. And of course, I began sharing in relation to the Lord. But the scriptures that I took them to, I'd like to take you to now. And the first one... It's in Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, verse 26. Ephesians 4 and verse 26. This is what Paul writes to the Ephesians. He says, In your anger do not sin. Now he's quoting that from the Old Testament. In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. My, that is a very important principle to live a victorious life with the Lord. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Now we'll come back to that. Turn to the next scripture, one that we'll be very familiar with, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34. Here's the Lord Jesus ministering what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34, this is what the Lord says. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Two important principles for life. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry and don't worry about tomorrow now in other words what is left what is left what is left is today so when you go to bed at night he's saying don't have the anger in your heart if you are angry don't let that anger be there when you go to sleep this is where forgiveness comes in. Do you know that so many people go through life with overpacked baggage? Just like that little bag, that little carry-on bag that lady had shown was overpacked, couldn't close it. Many people go through life with over overpacked baggage. They've got piled into today. When they wake up in the morning, they've got piled into today all the hurts and rejections, the resentments that they feel, and the, the, the unforgiveness that they have, what other people have done to them. And it's piled in to today. When they wake up in the morning, all that is in their day. And then they add all the worries of tomorrow all the worries they look 
ahead and they're worried about this and they're worried about that and when they wake up in that morning they've got all the things of the past piled in and they pile in all the worries of tomorrow and they wonder why life doesn't work. Do you know many Christians are like that? The Lord Jesus took all the past. He took it on the cross. Everything that we experienced and experience in life that is hurtful, not only our sins, but what others have done to us, the Lord Jesus took on the cross. So that Paul is writing and he's saying, don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. In other words, the Lord Jesus took everything. Let's Let's allow him to have it, be set free from it. And then in the day that we live, any hurts that come our way, let forgiveness, the debt of love, be expressed from us. The debt we owe to others, forgiveness to others, so that we go to sleep without any anger or hurt or unforgiveness in our hearts. And don't let's add any of the worries of tomorrow. In other words, let's live a day at a time with the Lord. That is how we live a victorious Christian life. It's living daily. The Lord Jesus taking all the past, not allowing anything of the, that day to be taken into the next day, and not adding all the worries that are ahead. When you know the Lord has forgiven, then it's when we realize how much he's forgiven us, then it's much easier for us to pay the debt we owe to others and forgive them. And when you know what the Lord's done for us and his faithfulness to us, it's much easier not to add the worries of tomorrow. The Christian life works one day at a time. The Lord bless you.